Hi, I'm Simon. I work for ServiceNow in the application development team. And today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. Hi, my name's Aria. Hi, my name's Akib. And we are recording videos to answer some commonly asked questions from our customers. Today we're going to talk about uh, service catalogue items and the checkbox variable. Now, the checkbox variable is probably the simplest control you can put on a catalogue item. It's a checkbox, you tick it or untick it, but it is causing some questions. So hopefully we can clear those up today. Before we get to the questions, Akib, can you go to a catalogue item and show us how to create a new checkbox variable? Okay, so I'm in the catalogue item now, the Apple iPhone 5, and over here we have the checkbox variable case. Um, so what we do is, this will be um, a text field by default, you change it to checkbox, and you set the question and the back backend name. Save that and you'll have a checkbox rendered on your catalog item next time you open it. So here for example we have the case option on our iPhone 5. Great, thanks. That's a really simple control, as I said before, it's either ticked or unticked. So one of the uh, questions we get from customers is around how that field interacts with the mandatory attribute of the variable. So if any of those variables, no text boxes or choices, we can make them mandatory. And that means that when a customer submits the item, they have to have put in a value in that control. Um, but the checkbox behaves slightly differently, doesn't it? So when a mandatory uh, field is rendered, it has a default value of false, which in uh, coding terms is a uh, true value. And when, it's, uh, when you add the catalog item to your cart, it'll go through as false, which is in coding terms correct. Okay, so what we're saying is that an empty text field would be caught by a mandatory check because an empty field is null. However, a checkbox always has a value, whether it's true or false, a value of false will still pass that mandatory check. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. And some customers have asked, um, how do I implement, for example, click here to accept the terms and conditions, which we see all over the web. It's a very common thing to do, yes, so yeah. click here to accept. Uh, how could I implement that if an unticked checkbox is still an acceptable value. Right, okay, so the, the real, really the only approach is to go by a catalog client script. So if I go ahead and jump to that module, so already created one uh, to save time, terms and conditions. So what we've done here is we've created a variable set um, called terms and conditions, and this can now be applied to any uh, item, catalog item, and along with it this client script will be loaded on the page um, as an on submit, so it will catch any form of submit, so if you go to add to cart, if you go to order now, or in fact if you choose submit on a record producer, this function will be executed. And all we have here is a single value referring to the checkbox that we're going to have on the record producer. We, get, we find out if it's true or false. Um, if it's false, we go ahead and clear up any messages that might be on the field lingering there. We tell them, look, you need to agree to the terms to proceed. And finally, we return the success. So if the boolean or the checkbox was checked, you'd, get return, you'd be returning true at this point and you'd allow the user to submit the form. If it was false, you return false so, so that the submit action is uh, rejected. So if I now go to the record producer itself, and we can just go ahead and try it, try it. So if we go to new LDAP server, try it. So we've added the variable set right to the bottom of the record producer as you would expect for terms and conditions. And here we've given it a label, we've given it uh, a help, and of course the checkbox. So the help has just got some copy text in here and uh, the user can choose to read that or not. Now let's say I've gone through all of this, I'm happy and I go to hit submit. So in our case, we display the message saying, look, you need to accept these terms before proceeding. And if they click multiple times, there'll be no extra messages. So that was the key part of hiding the field message in the first place. So now if I check agree and submit, we go through and our request has been submitted. That's great. So just to summarize, the checkbox looks like a except this terms and conditions field, yeah. but because of the mandatory check always passes with a checkbox, whether it's ticked or not, 
some additional scripting is required. Yes. Good. And the second point in this video was around using multiple checkboxes together. Now, some customers have discovered that when I have multiple checkboxes on a catalog item, mm -hmm. if I set the order to be the same value, so they all order, order 500, yeah. visually they're grouped into a set of checkboxes. Okay. Uh, can we see that? Go. Okay, on our desktop computer, we have extra additional PC items that we can add to the order. Um, so in this variable set, we've got multiple checkboxes, um, which essentially are a group of checkboxes. Um, so for example, uh, monitor, mouse, external hard drive and keyboard. Um, so once this is rendered, we'll have multiple checkboxes in one container. Okay, so what I can see there are four checkboxes under the same label. And you achieve that by setting the order value to be the same on all four checkboxes. Now, a confusing point is customers see this and they see a visual grouping of checkboxes and they make the assumption that those checkboxes are somehow logically linked. But they're not, are they? They're not no, logically linked. They're individual checkboxes and they don't um, behave as you would expect them to behave mm -hmm. as a grouping. So, customers think, no, I would have to select one of the four or select all of the four, and none of these logic rules apply. The trick of setting the order is only a visual grouping. Yes, so without any code, they're just independent checkboxes. Okay. So, oh yeah, a, a question I had recently yeah. was, if I have a group of four, I want the user to be forced to select one of those four. Yes. How can I achieve that? So again, catalog client script is gonna be needed for this. So we've already set one up for this container. We just head there. And we've named it at these two additional items. So here it gets slightly uh, complex. So just for clarity, we've set up an array of fields, which and these are of course the checkboxes that we have to consider, and another variable number of checked. So here we can really define how many of these checkboxes need to be checked before we are happy with submitting this form or the catalog item for order. So the loop here is constrained by, of course, the number of fields we need to check and how many we need to check. Um, before submitting the form. So the logic essentially going on, well, the processing going on here is just decreasing the number of checked by one every time we find one that's got a true value. So in this case, we're looking for two to be checked and we've got a total of four fields. So this will keep looping through every one of those fields. Once it reaches two being checked, it's happy um, and exits and then goes on to perform this check. So have we actually found the total we're after, if we have, great, we'll hide any messages that might be there. If we haven't found it, we'll output a message stopping them and at the end we'll return the success value. So of course again, success value being true if you want the item to be submitted, false if you don't want it to be submitted. Right, so jumping back to the item itself, uh, Office Desktop, if we go ahead and try it. So in the label we've added a help for check at least two, but we're going to ignore that and try to add to cart. So in this case we get the uh, warning check at least two uh, extra items. So let's say okay I only checked one of them this time and I want to add to cart. I still can't add to cart and I still, I'm still left with that message. And now I'm going to fulfill the criteria so I'm going to check three of them and attempt to add to cart and this time I'm successful. You've written some code there to logically group these checkboxes together as well as visually group them into that container. Yes. Okay great. Well, that answers two of the questions that have been given by customers about the humble checkbox. Uh, we're going to continue to record more videos about commonly asked questions around service catalogue and ITSM. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Over to you, Jess. <laughs>